Hello everyone. So people have been asking me to do an adventure mode guide, so that's what I'm gonna do. A couple disclosures first. One, adventure mode can change, and I'm going to do a playthrough while talking about it. I'm not gonna edit my voice in later to go over things, I'm just going to do it while talking about it because that's the easiest thing I can do right now. And two, I'm not covering every possible thing, so this isn't really a tutorial or a guide, but this should help you if you're having trouble. And the second thing is, the best way to play Adventure Mode is to do it yourself first. Because it'll be fun to discover everything for yourself. This really should be for people who have done it a couple times and are having trouble with it and kind of want to see someone do it. Alright, so let's talk about the expansions. You don't need Reign of Giants to do Adventure Mode, but I'm doing it because if you want this world for Reign of Giants later, you're going to want it enabled and it only makes the game more challenging. So if you're having a hard time, don't go with Reign of Giants. And now for world choices, I like to keep everything default because that's the fairest way. If you make the world smaller, it'll be easier time finding the portal. But honestly, that doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect adventure mode. Nothing here is gonna affect adventure mode. And then autumn or spring. It's easier to start in autumn than spring. And this is the only thing I would consider changing, really, to be fair. I usually make my worlds huge so that there's more stuff to do. Um, and I, if you want to start in autumn, I would consider that fair because otherwise you could just brute force it by starting the world. And if it's spring quitting and starting world, and that's just a waste of time. But I'm going to keep it like this for now. Keep it to full. And your character choice is going to be pretty important. Wilson's pretty vanilla. You can do it him. Willow's a really strong choice because her lighter and her um, sanity control is really great. Normally, I don't recommend choosing Willow for people who are new because she can burn down your base. But you're not going to be basing, so it doesn't really matter. A strong man's a really terrible choice because he loses hunger at a really fast rate, which is actually an important thing during adventure mode is hunger. Um, Wendy is okay, but I don't get a lot of use of Abigail. WX78 is the next best choice. I'm going to be choosing him. He's my favorite to go through with it. He might be a little bit more difficult for players who are inexperienced because his starting stats are low, but he can carry gears with him and his he can carry his charge with him. And that's going to make it so a good first round in Adventure Mode is basically going to guarantee that you can do every other round. So he's a great choice for Adventure Mode. And then all these other characters, I'm not going to talk about them too in depth. Wickerbottom's pretty good because she has all the stuff unlocked. Woody's pretty good because Bear Beaver can be helpful during nights. Um, I don't have Wes unlocked for some reason. I'll unlock him in adventure mode. That's the reason because I'm going to unlock him. Um, Maxwell, you get in adventure mode. It would be pointless to talk about. Wigfred seems like a good choice because she's kind of overpowered in early game. But the problem is meat isn't always available in some of the adventure mode maps, which we'll talk about. And these shipwreck characters don't matter. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do 78, and we will start the world. And I will make this shipwreck compatible, because why not? If you're going to play shipwreck later, you might want to do that too. All right, we're living the nomad lifestyle. It literally doesn't matter what state we find the portal in. So keep that in mind. I'm using this mini map so I don't have to pause all the time and waste some time. That's for your sake. You don't need the mini map. You can just pause all the time. Set, pause, set key, and then just do it all the time. So we're going to pick any vegetables we see, and we're also going to look at the map to see what we're revealing, kind of find the water. We're going to go around the whole world like this. And this intro part's just going to be finding the portal. I'll talk a little bit about it and how to survive. Basically, we're living a nomad lifestyle. If you kind of know how to nomad around the map, then skip ahead to where I find the portal. I'll put an annotation in right now, and I'll also put it in the description where to go to, to just do adventure mode. But otherwise, you're going to have to find adventure mode. But we'll kill butterflies for the Nomad Lifestyle whenever we see them. Especially at WX78 because his benefit is no spoilage. Oh god, I'm so bad. 
They're just juking me. There we go. So we want to kill butterflies and pick everything. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to get a, a decent amount of grass. Nothing's going to carry over into adventure mode, so you don't need to learn recipes at all. You just need um, a torch, and you also would probably want an axe. We're in spring, by the way, which means we're going to go insane. But that's fine. I don't really worry about that. So just tracing the world, kind of. We'll need an axe. And we're going to get some logs so we can make a fire. We'll probably want a fire for this. Even if you're nomading around, you want a fire. So you can cook shit if you have to. And when you kill butterflies like that, I probably reviewed this in a lot of videos, but you need to find a butterfly. There's one right over there. I'll review this the next day. You find a butterfly and you're going to press Control and F. That's your hotkey for attacking a friendly. You're going to walk over them to kind of where you're standing over them or your shadows are touching or basically you're just close enough. You'll kind of get a feel for it and press Control F1. We don't really care about any of our stats right now. We can pick flowers for sanity because we're not worried about this world. If you are worried about the world... Um, then either set up base and then do this, or alternatively, you can just do this and kind of be conservative. I wouldn't recommend either of those. You'll see why, but it's going to change your character by going into adventure mode. So, just pick a new world and do this if you're just doing it to do it. And if you're doing it when you're main worlds, you should either know where the portal is or be comfortable enough to have enough resources to just go find it. Oh, this is aggressively annoying. There's a lot of them. Wow. So we're just going to juke these guys. We don't really care about taking damage. I'm not wearing any armor, but um, it's going to be hard for them to kill me because I'm going to be eating butterflies, so I'd have to take a massive amount of damage to die. But you still want to be careful in swamps and stuff and Nomad because you're not wearing armor. You can make armor, but making a science machine is just a waste of time in this run. So there's only a couple ways to find the adventure mode portal, and one of them is making a divining rod, which is going to take a lot longer than just actually finding it, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to kind of explore the map, and then we're going to look for it. There's a couple areas it can't spawn. It's going to spawn in a ring of forest, but that ring of forest can spawn pretty much anywhere. It won't be in the middle of a swamp, but it could be in the forest part of the middle of the swamp, but it won't be like on swamp ground. So it could be like right here, but it could be in the middle of a swamp. Because sometimes there's a forest biome in the middle of a swamp. There's always a forest biome at least touching one of the swamps, because that's where sinkhole is. Wow, there's a war going on. We don't need any of that food. I mean, you can go for it if it's free takings like this. But we don't need it. We're, it our inventory management doesn't matter right now. We need like a torch in our inventory and maybe enough logs to make a fire and that's it. And we're not going to stop for the night unless we have to cook shit. And we probably won't have to cook stuff ever. These raw butterfly wings heal you and they're going to restore hunger. Willow's obviously a slightly easier choice to find the portal because she has her lighter which I maintain is not a good light source at all. But since your sanity and stuff doesn't matter at all for finding this. So what we know right now is basically it's not here. It's not in this, this section. It's not in this section because we haven't found a ring of trees. So that's kind of how we're going to eliminate this without exploring every inch of the map. We could get lucky and just find it, but that's not going to happen. We know it's not here. We know it's not here because we would be seeing the trees by now. So we know it's not in this swamp. But I'm still going to outline the edges of the world anyway. Alright, being in the swamp at night is dangerous. 
we want to make this second torch for us to equip when we're not standing over tentacles. We don't want to wait for it to run out because then we could run into tentacles. And now I kind of have to focus on my character and not walk by tentacles so they don't kill me. Rain is coming, but we don't really need to worry about that. It's gonna produce light, but it doesn't damage enough to matter. And I can thaw myself out with the fire at any given time. I don't wanna worry about being wet as WX, because I can literally just eat butterfly wings if I have to during the day. And restore massive amounts of health. But it's gonna rain all the time if we, um,. If we do this, I can make him um, a petty parasol too. As WX. Okay, so we explore this whole swamp. It's not in this section, because like I said, there'd be like a ring. It could be. I don't. I'm not like hundred percent sure. But we're gonna keep going anyway and kind of outline the world. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like burn forest down for light, like that. I mean to keep my torch up and it also you get higher sanity from um, doing that because there's more light it's a little bit slower because you have to stop every now and then but it definitely makes up for it because you get a huge light radius and once again this is one of those nomad lifestyle things where I don't really care what I do to the world oh this mandrake it's gonna follow me around okay it's already day. He'll just fall asleep now. And so the petty parasol right here, I'm gonna need some like grass and stuff. So I'll make one of those. Just because I have to pick the flowers. It'll limit how much water I'm getting. It's not gonna protect me enough to matter. So I'm not gonna go looking for the stuff, but I'll definitely grab the ingredients when I pass it. And I can use this to pass the night if I want to. But otherwise I'm just gonna keep it in my inventory for funsies. Picking flowers while I go maintains my sanity. If my sanity is 100, there's no point. I could get those to restore health if I wanted to. If you're not comfortable kiting enemies, it's generally not a good idea to kill spiders to restore health at the possibility of getting a gland with no armor, because every hit basically is going to negate the fact that you fought that spider and a couple other spiders too. And it's pretty easy to get hit if you suck. And with no armor. And they also don't always drop a gland. I'm going to speed up a couple sections of me just exploring when I'm not talking. Alright, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to double back a little and kind of make paths where I know how many trees there are around it. So it's like a big ring of trees and evil flowers. So you'd notice it if you got this close. You'd be able to see the edges of it. So I'm going to like do something like that. No, you got to eat. All right, so you'd notice it. So when I'm leaving an area like this and I know that there's a lip, I'm going to kind of double back a little so I don't ever have to come to this area again. So same here. I'm going to do a little double back thing. Scope out this area. Get enough uh, stuff for a parasol. If I can. I need another torch, too. So that takes priority right now. And what's that again? Just do this in fall if you're really going to have problems with this. Oh, another mandrake. So I can't find any of them in my worlds where I'm trying to show you how to make a pan flute, but I find like ten of them here. He'll follow me around and then um, he'll root himself when it comes time to sleep.
All right, so evil flowers like this are a good indicator, but that also might just mean um, one of these guys. So it does right here. This is going to come in handy if I need to make a science machine. Basically, if it gets to the point where I have the materials for a science machine and the materials to... All right, so I have that, but I'm not making it yet. The reason being... Um, why? The reason being, it's, it's going to spoil it the second I start to make it. And raw vegetables give you more hunger than cooked vegetables, but some of them give you less health. So I'm eating everything raw. Cooking, it's kind of a waste of time. If you have Will's Lighter and you need, like, a cooked mushroom, go for it. Those will give you sanity. That's Polly. That's good to know for if you're trying to get to a shipwrecked world, you need some float, Sam. So this man, Jake, what I'll allow me to do is I'm going to make a fire at some point. Because I'll need to cook some green mushrooms if I get to that point. And then I can just cook the mandrake and eat it to pass the day. But it's kind of a waste of time if that situation doesn't arise. Because I can also just walk through the night with a torch. I'm guessing this is going to kind of be a land branch. I can see it kind of tapering right there, so I'm going to double back a little and make sure there's no um, gate here. Like, you can leave like a width like that much and be sure that there's no gate. To cover the most area at once. Those guys will do crazy damage to you. He would have killed me if he hit me. And I'm walking on the road because it's a little faster, even though I'm revealing more area than I need to. Oh, there's just tall birds everywhere. Okay, I can feel safe that that's also an edge. That's not good. So, I can't drop this torch to light stuff on fire while they're following me. Because they are dangerous. But now I can. I don't want to die from the fire, too. If the fire starts spreading real fast, you can get yourself killed. Like here. If it spread here. Around. So you always want to kind of light behind you and walk forward. This also will keep me um, a little dry when it rains. It's going to keep me warm. Alright. See, I got took some fire damage there because I was walking into that tree. Now, to use the 1%, I will... Oh, I clicked on myself into the tree. You can light something with one a 1% 1 torch if you click on it. Alright, so more evil flowers, but it's always just these guys right now. And let's make these pigs homeless. Your house is gone. I hope you have homeowner's insurance. My health is getting pretty low from um, being wet, as you will notice. But it's not really a big deal. As long as I don't do anything dumb, I should be fine. And I'll get some butterflies tomorrow. The Nomad Lifestyle, um, basically, you spend like a large amount of time... ...low on health. It's 
not very avoidable. You have to really set up a base if you want to, like, kind of get things going. You can't just, like, expect everything to come to you. But this is... Setting up a base is such a waste of time for this because literally I can do this at the speed I can explore the map. At the speed I can find it. If I get struck by lightning, it'll be even easier. That's a, I, it's actually slightly faster in the spring because if you get struck by lightning, you get super speed for a little bit, which is the fastest way to do this. And I'm going to equip this. I don't need this to kill butterflies, but my swing speed's slightly faster than with punching. So I have massive amounts of food that I could eat for health, so I'm not really worried. I'd be worried if I was getting really low and I didn't have any food. And you could probably look this up. I'm not really going to concern myself with this right now. I mean, it's probably going to make this guy stupid, but I don't know exactly every biome if a Maxwell's Gate can spawn, but I'm going to explore this way anyway because I don't know. I haven't read anything that said it can't spawn in like a biome like this, but it seems like it might not be able to. All right, so waste time killing this butterfly. Instead of just letting him spiral. I'm fairly certain it can be pretty much anywhere. But you would you would see the difference in biome. It's always on a grass biome. Oh, you bitch. And I don't want to be any... I don't want to confuse anyone. I mean, it's always on a grass biome. Like It's always like literally sitting on a grass biome. It can be in any biome, but it'll be sitting on a grass biome. That's the turf it's on. So I probably want to cook some of my food just for health at this point. Because of the rain, I'm kind of getting low on health. And also getting a little low on sanity, so I'm going to pick some of these. And I can eat these too. They all give me a little bit of health. Alright, so here's one of the things. We don't need that, but just so you know. If we were detecting this with a divine rod, we would also be detecting the things, and we might run into those by accident. Okay, so we have a killer bee biome. That's crazy dangerous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eat a bunch of stuff. Eat butterfly wings. Cook these berries. Eat these. Restore some health. Eat some flowers. And then I'm going to go for it. And it doesn't matter that I'm full health. I literally could not care about health any less. We're not doubling up when we go anywhere, so we're never going to have a problem with hunger. Unless we, like, don't know what we're doing. Lag could get me killed right here. But then I just wouldn't post a video, so there's no way you'd know. Yep. I'm going to get killed by lag. Oh, shit. I have to cross back through here, too. Yeah, see, so when there's this many, many guys on my screen, I always lag crazy, and it's like literally impossible. I can be running straight away from an enemy, and they'll still be hitting me. So, there you have it. Killed by lag. So what I do in a situation like this is if I'm actually in danger of dying is I have to make um uh fire to dry myself off. With the petty parasol and a big fire, I will dry myself off enough where I can survive. Cause I'm slowly gaining water even though I have an umbrella because it's not a good umbrella. <laughs> Fucking get away from me. 
I don't want it to be anywhere near these guys, so. So I have to keep going, I guess, right now. And then I'll make some food, too. I'm waiting till night, because I don't want to waste a torch if I don't have to. Sanity and some health. Okay, it's getting close to night. See, this all happened because I got hit by the bees, which I shouldn't have gotten hit by the bees, but there's really not much I can do. I mean, if the game, like, drops frames like that, you can sometimes get hit. So I want to build this somewhat close to this tree, but not entirely close to the tree. Standing under the tree will help dry me off, too. Um, then I've got to put some fire in here. And I can cook these and eat these. Cook these and eat these. Eat these. I'm already getting crazy amounts of health. Alright, one sec. Alright. It's slowing down. My soaking rate, though I can actually just really ignore all of that because I have enough logs to just make campfires and cook food like I did. The only problem is getting hit by enemies this is a real big problem. You really should just not get hit by enemies or this becomes difficult. Or start in autumn. That's a way easier way to do this. There we go. Just did that. Cooking that resets the night. And then I'll eat it. And reset my health. And reset a day. I'm not really losing days. Because I'm not really working towards anything. And here we are. Perfect. Full health. Minimum wetness. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store a fire like this. Um, I can make a fire pit if possible. And now we have Maxwell's door right here. We can go in and start adventure mode. If you die in adventure mode, you respawn right here with everything going on right here. So you don't need to worry about dying. The only problem is if you die like 38 times, eventually your sanity will drop from all these evil flowers. If that's really a problem for you, you're dying that many times, um... You can go pick all the flowers. And I'll tell you here, should you die, you'll start back in this portal but lose all your progress on the journey. That means all the progress in your adventure mode journey. So what's going to happen is we have to survive five worlds. The first four are random. There is, I believe, a selection of five, and you will do four of them. It's either five or six, and you'll do four of them. A couple of them can't be the first one, and a couple of them like can't be like the fourth and one and the fifth one is always the same